What's up, guys? Welcome back. Friday. Lifestyle. Titan Lifestyle. Titan Lifestyle. Big Lifestyle. Drew. John in the house. We are here for you guys. We got a lot of cool things to cover with you guys today. I mean, some lifestyle stuff, right? Yeah, some lifestyle. It's been a great week. Uh, another big event for us tomorrow. Um, Iron Bay. Iron Bay Next Classic. week, we got the fashion show on St. Pete. All kinds of good stuff going on. Ooh. I'm feeling great. This MK677 is making me feel great, guys. I feel I feel great. I knew I'm you like the MK. It. Yeah, I love that MK. Huge. I'm eating good. I'm sleeping good. Um, I'm actually I feel a lot better in the gym, a lot more energy. Um, I, don't know, I feel great and absolutely no side effects. Uh, it doesn't make me drowsy. Last video I did, we did, I told you about the MK. Sometimes it makes people drowsy. Yep. I did a little trial run for two days just to see, taking it at different times in the day. It doesn't make me drowsy. So I actually take it before I train. That way after I'm done training, I can eat a lot. But uh, test it out, guys. Take it at nighttime or take it during the day if you have a day off and it makes you drowsy. That way you know when you can take it. But for me, it didn't make me drowsy, but sometimes it does do that for people. So Absolutely. try it out. We always tell patients, you know, everybody's different. So these medications can affect you a little bit differently. And MK677 is an oral GHRH. That means it's a growth and releasing hormone. Um, it's actually going to stimulate your own growth hormone to convert to IGF-1 in your liver. And that's what you get all the great benefits from. Like you hear people talking about growth hormone all the time. It's because of IGF-1 levels. And right. IGF-1 is great for sleep, libido, strength, lean mass. I mean, yeah. tightening up. So, I mean... Yeah. I guess Drew's Good. feeling all those things. Yeah, I'm feeling right? great. My weight's pretty much the same, but I'm actually leaner. My waist is tighter, and I'm feeling a lot better. Yeah. Um, again, it does. I don't really see uh, any joint problems that I'm having right now, so it might be because of that. But yeah, I love it. I love this. Absolutely. Stuff. Love this. My probably my favorite Titan therapy, Hercules and MK7 right now. Yeah. I actually have to. The MK jumped up in front of the ECA. It's it's a hot, tough decision, but uh, I still take my ECA. But MK is is definitely the truth. It's the real deal, and it's oral too, guys. You don't have to worry about injecting yourself. It's not a steroid, nothing like that. It's, it's oral. You just take ones. one capsule every day. It's that easy. It's yeah, simple. man. We get a lot of questions about it, and you know, a lot of questions about growth hormone and stuff like that. Where growth hormone is illegal to prescribe for off-label use. It's made for dwarfism, uh, adult growth hormone deficiency disorders, and there's blood tests to do this. The FDA and the DA look highly down on growth hormone being prescribed if it's off-label use. Um, so at that point, there's other things that you can do to help naturally stimulate your own growth hormone levels to actually raise it above level. So when we look at IGF-1 levels, we look at reference ranges, just like testosterone or anything else. And you look at symptoms that go along with it. But usually your IGF-1 levels are average, so that means mid-range of whatever reference range that is, right? And the older we get, those reference range to IGF-1 levels start going down because we're starting to lose it, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's when our body really starts breaking down. Mm -hmm. So raising these levels, and the studies were done on 55 years and older patients, males and females, IGF-1 levels jumped 123% on clinical studies. I believe it because I'm, I'm feeling great. Another thing too, guys, a lot of bodybuilders or even people trying to lose weight or just, you know, they, they call growth the so-called fountain of youth drug. Yeah. It's hard to take. I mean, it's something you guys got to inject some bodybuilders inject it multiple times a day. Yeah. You have to store it in a certain area. MK, none of that. Right. Little bottle, capsule, pop it in the morning with or without food or whatever time of day you want to take it. So it's a lot easier to take than growth hormone and it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Oh yeah, Growth sure. hormone is expensive, especially at a bodybuilding level. If you got to take growth hormone, you spend the thousands of dollars every month it's way cheaper with the MK and way easier to take. Absolutely. And you know, I mean, uh, people are always looking for this. Now, the other good thing about MK677 to growth hormone is, is if you take growth hormone, especially at high level doses of growth hormone, two things can happen. One, insulin resistance. And you know that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Metabolic syndrome. That is another negative. So when these two things happen, glucose levels can rise, which can cause diabetes type 2. We know that hypoglycemic people, that's another problem. So when you're dealing with sugar levels and you're talking about growth hormone, you got to make sure that you're not getting negative side effects from growth hormone that they, these things can cause, where MK677 will not cause these levels usually. Right. So glucose levels aren't usually affected by most patients that we've seen in blood levels. So that's a positive. 
Plus, it's an oral form like you talked about, not an injectable, so they're yeah. not having to dilute it. And it's coming from you know a, pharmacy. a U.S. A pharmacy. Yes. It's not coming from a third, you know, a random website where you don't know where it's coming from or. I mean, Peter's coming from it. yeah. There's so many. I mean, there's so many peptide companies and places that have websites. You guys got to be careful and order yeah. from them. So I mean, they basically can send you whatever they want to send you. Yeah. And, and there's no there's no track on it. I mean, yeah. It's, Let's talk about yeah. that because I did get a call uh, this week from a patient, and he said, "Listen, John, I used and this was BPC one five seven. I used the BPC one five seven. It worked awesome. I did have a question though. So I looked up BPC one five seven online because I was going to order it again from you guys." Mm -hmm. And it, and it was like 275 bucks, so yeah. it's not that cheap. So I looked it up and there was like, you know, 10 companies that came up and they were selling it for like 50 bucks or 60 bucks a vial. Yeah. So he goes, you know, what's the difference? So I broke it down for him, I told him what the difference was. Here's the differences. One difference is, that's a research company for research use, not for human use. So that means that it's not for you're test your body, you're right? Basically a test it's for rats or animals or whatever you're supposedly testing. Two, there's no endotoxin testing, sterility testing, or concentration testing. So you have no idea what's in the vial, if it's underdosed, if it really is what they say it is, or you're injecting your body if it's gonna cause maybe an infection or some other problem that can really damage your health and not do anything beneficial for you. Other thing, dosages. So the BPC, I just broke it down for him. And dosages could be the same per se on vial because anybody can put that on the vial. Yeah. But really is when the testing is and where it's coming from. U.S. licensed pharmacies for human use. So that means it's prescribed, it's coming from U.S. licensed pharmacy, which is regulated, and then shipped to you and it's prescribed in your name. So there's no illegal substances, right. no for research purposes only, and stuff like that. So that's the difference, plus milligrams on the BPC. I, the guy was telling me it was like a five milligram vial, right? right? So there's 15 milligrams in our vial, so it's yeah, three it's times three the dose, percent, right? Yeah. So essentially it's about the exact same. Um, so just be aware of what you guys are doing and what you guys are researching out there and what you're going to put in your body. Uh, I guess when you're younger, you know, I, I guess maybe we're all uh, guilty of it, but you really have the Superman syndrome. None's going to hurt you. Yeah, yeah. You, you, know, you, don't, you, you wait for you wait for the engine light to come on before you before you <laughs> right? uh, do something about it. So. Yeah, so that's that's kind of scary, man. You know. So at that point, I want you guys to make sure you guys are looking at your health. Because you only have one body, man. So you really, really want to make sure you guys are taking care of it, making sure you guys are on point with what you guys are doing. There's no better feeling than having a, a, a bottle with your name on it. You bodybuilder, there's no, there's no better feeling than having a prescription bottle with your name on it. You can take wherever you want. If you have yeah. to fly, you take it with you. There's no, there's no question. A lot of times guys buy stuff from whoever or wherever, and they have to wait on it to see if it's real, to see if they can feel it. You have to wait a couple weeks. What happens is a lot of time guys buy stuff and they have a negative side effect. Mm -hmm. So they wait till they have the negative side effect to figure out if it's real. Right. There's no testing involved. Right. They're basically self, yeah. you know, like in other, words, in other words, if they take a, a peptide or whatever they're taking, if it's something that makes them hungry, if they're yeah. not getting hungry, then like, oh, this isn't real. Right. You don't have to worry about that. You right. have it in the bottle from a pharmacy right. with the name. It's no, it's, it's basically Hakuna Matata. Yeah. No worries. Yes. And that shit works every time. You yes. don't have to wait on it. You don't, you don't have to wait. You don't have to, you don't have to go through a bottle or two to see if it's real to get another two. You right. know right away where it's good for you. No guessing games. So right? that's what really comes down to it. Speaking of. Oh, Jay Jacobs, MK677. Yes. So Jay, I think it's took it. He's liked it. There's one thing it does do, so it does stimulate appetite. So if you guys oh, yeah. you know, are worried about stimulating appetite, if you need to stimulate appetite, this is a great one. It's gonna stimulate appetite. If you have like a photo shoot, like you know, if you're a, a bikini model or something like that, like next week, I probably wouldn't recommend doing MK for you guys right off the bat. There's other things, the GHRHs that you guys can use, um, but at that point, MK677 is gonna definitely stimulate appetite. A lot of people have problems you know, stimulating. So yeah. is MK safe? So Sammy is out of Canada. Sammy follows us a lot, so thank you, Sammy, for bringing up the question. So, all right, MK677 is pretty safe. So the clinical studies on it have been used for human use. So and it was used in, um, in older adults, so 55 and older. And we know that the older we get, the more genetically disposed we are to things happening, like, like cancer or you know disease or breaking down the body's immune system and such. So when you really do use these things on older people, they're gonna have a, like more of a lesser immune system to you. So they're probably not gonna be able to take the abuse that some of these things would do. So at that point, 
the MK677 was very tolerable and did have a safe profile. So at that point, I listen, I'm, I'm not going to tell you it's safe for everybody to use, but yes, it was safe for humans to use. At that point, there was no negative side effects. There should be no cause of, of terminal damage to you or any issues. You should really blood test uh, IGF-1 levels if you really want to see what a baseline is. Like for Drew, I know what his baseline is. So. Drew came in originally when he when he came on the team, and the first thing that we do is we sign him up as far as getting blood. We want to make sure we get blood on everybody. Now, you don't need blood work for the Hercules Potion or MK677 or some of these therapies. You just need it for hormones like testosterone or IGF-1 and such. But it's always good to see because you want to know what's going on before you start working on things, exactly. right? Yeah. Or know where you're going to start from. So with Drew, we've got the initial blood test. Now, Drew's been on therapies for about two or three months now. Um, we're going to go in and see where those levels come back as. And that's going to be the, the real telltale. How yeah. you feel, yeah. where your levels are at, and those should correlate to what's going on. Mm -hmm. So at that point, if you test your IGF-1 levels and you say, all right, this is where it started. Now I'm going MK677. If it's real, prescribed, you know what it is, take it for 30 days. Now before you end the treatment, four or five days beforehand, you should go in for another blood test of IGF-1. You should see where those levels come back as. They should be elevated. Okay, they might not be extreme, they might be up 100 points, they might be up 50 points, but you should see some sort of progress in it going up. And if you don't, I'd question it or look into another possible option for therapy. But that's worked for pretty much everybody that we put it on. So I hope that answers your question. Another, another thing, too, to talk about he, what he's talking about with the blood test. A lot of, a lot of people, too, they'll, um, they'll do certain things or they won't take certain supplements before they get their blood work done right. in hopes of their levels dropping so hopefully the doctor can give them something bring their levels back up right. you guys are basically selling yourself short because once you start your therapy you're not going to know i mean whatever you're doing or not doing now is the time to go to get your blood work done yeah there's a reason why you know they say don't take things a few days before but i mean yeah. if you guys are i mean to say if you're taking something that you shouldn't be taking because it's not doctor prescribed right and then now you you want to oh I'm gonna stop two weeks before I get my blood work done so hopefully everything drops and then it says shows that I'm low and then it brings it back up it doesn't work like that because in the long run it's gonna it's gonna cause other probably not gonna really know where you're at yeah. you know it's almost like taking a caffeine pill and then going and getting your blood pressure checked yeah it's stimulants. why take a caffeine pill and go get your blood pressure checked? it's gonna be jacked up the only way to be... truly know is to just take it how you're supposed to take it yeah. so when you get your blood work done. Google it, check the website, look at what you have to do before you take your blood work. Right. Don't go out drinking and drinking Red Bulls and right. doing whatever and then go get your blood work done and be like, oh, I wonder why it's like this. You, If you really want to know where it's at, yeah. make sure you take the proper stuff, proper steps you need to take before you get your blood Absolutely. work Absolutely. And if you guys have questions about what you need to do before your blood work, that's what we're here for and that's what we do. That's what concierge medicine is all about. We're here for you guys to let you guys know what to do. We're not like the average doctor's office that's going to blow you off and not give you an answer on your question. We're here to give you that support and those answers. So follow the directions of the staff or the medical provider on how you're supposed to do things. A common error that I see, and this is a tip for you guys to get blood work, hydrate. Oh, it's yeah. essential to hydrate. That means drink water. Drink lots of water the night before and the day of before you go in. And I don't mean one little liter of bottle. I mean, try to drink as much as you possibly can. Maybe a gallon between the two days, if that's feasible. Maybe a gallon each day. Yeah, you, you, got, you, got, you, got, you guys can drink a gallon of water a day. That's only eight bottles. I know people you drink a bottle every hour <laughs> that you're up and you, you get there. I you mean, can do it. You guys, guys can't drink a gallon of water that you're not trying. Right you, you're, you're not trying, but yeah, you know, water. hydrate as much as possible. I even have to tell my dad this because he doesn't do it properly, yeah. right? Another thing is, is when we work out, so when we work out and we do strenuous activity, when we go in, and me and Drew go in, let's say we go in today and we work out real hard, we bust our body down. Next day we go in for blood, your liver enzymes are possibly going to be a little bit higher. Now a doctor that's very in tune to this is going to know that the liver enzymes are going to rise when you start really breaking down the body and working out. Mm. So if you really want a true and accurate test, you might want to, A, take off a couple days before your blood test if your liver enzymes are in triple digits or such, or you can supplement with glutathione or super antioxidant to lower those liver enzymes, which should help those too. So at that point, you should be within natural normal range or maybe a couple points above, but that's one thing. The next thing, tip for blood work. So this has to deal with the prostate. So we know that if you do any friction to the prostate area, so if you ride a motorcycle, 
if you ride horses, if you're riding bikes, having extreme amounts of sex, and you go in the next day, the prostate levels, PSAs, mm. can be higher. Mm. So we know that too. So if you're having a PSA problem, your PSA is coming back higher, some doctors will look at this, and at that point, if your PSA comes back too high, they might send you and into you the that's from, from friction. the friction. Friction the problem. So, it's not, so if you guys are riding a bike at the gym too, if you're on a stationary bike or right. anything, like right. pretty much anything. I mean, you could be riding in a lawnmower. If you right. if you if you're riding a lawnmower, landscaping all day, and that that that, yep. that friction. It's a lot of friction. A lot of friction. A lot of pr- friction and stuff like that. And a lot of people they don't know that until they come in and they get maybe a PSA that's higher, mm. and then it's either prostate infection. You know, that can happen. Uh, they've done a lot of friction or, you know, they've had a lot of a, a rough sex the night before. That can do it, right. too. Um, you know, at that point, they should go get checked out by urology. If you hit a certain age, you're going to have to get the finger test. We can do a blood test through us, PSA. Mm-hmm. But in the long run, once you get older, you're going to have to check, and they're going to have to yeah. make sure that everything's okay in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, prostate is a, prostate cancer is a big one. Yeah. It's, a, it's a huge one. It's becoming more and more relevant out there. Um, another big thing was was testosterone causes prostate cancer right that's a myth yeah, you know that think. now so at that point the last study that was done i believe it was 1945 or 43 i have to look up the date but it, that was it was done on you know basically males that were over 55 years and older and they all automatically already had health problems mm. so it was kind of like a skewed result per se but that was the big myth so we know that and we know that testosterone levels this is this is really good so they say that higher testosterone levels are going to cause prostate issues. All right, so let's be logical. Think about it. When you were 18 to 21 years old, that's probably the highest your natural testosterone level probably was, mm-hmm. right? So were you the healthiest at that point or were you the sickest at that point? Was your body breaking down or was your body still growing? I was growing. Right. I was growing, yeah. right. This is the highest your levels have ever been. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So when we know that when we get older, we're, our levels are automatically going to be low. So they're naturally going to be low and deficient mm-hmm. around the lower end, and we're starting to cause problems. Yeah, and the thing is, is prostate problems come with age. You don't really see, I mean, I'm sure it's been out there, but you don't really see kids or people under the age of 40 even right. with prostate issues. That's right. And their testosterone's are high. So yeah, right. it makes sense. You know, if older logic. people get on HRT and they need HRT. Yeah, yeah so some, some people do. Now, yeah. now, some people, listen, if you have prostate cancer and stuff like that. What are the signs that people can know? Like, prostate like, cancer? No, not necessarily cancer. I mean, they're not going to diagnose if they have cancer. But if, some, if people are having problems with their prostate, yeah. they don't know about it. What yeah. are some of the symptoms yeah. or what are some of the signs they could be like, damn, that happens to me, maybe I should go get yeah. checked. Okay, so a big one is BPH. So mm-hmm. um, if you have to get up constantly in the middle of the night to urinate, if you're getting up more than once to twice a night, you should go get checked out. A PSA is very easy, it's a blood test. Uh, we can run it for $25 if you just want to run that, or you can run it in a full panel. Now, you're assuming, when he says using a bathroom a few times a night, he's assuming, Urinating. He's a, yeah, he's assuming regular fluid intake. Right. If you guys are doing a bodybuilding show, you're drinking oh, two, three gallons, that's yeah. different. Well, but he's assuming your regular day, regular fluid intake. I'm always talking about yeah. regular, yeah, average yeah. day jokes. When yeah. you start competing, and what you're drinking two, two gallons of water, I mean, you're going to be using the bathroom all night. So Two different levels. Yeah. you got a competitor level, you got a regular person's mm-hmm. level, right? So at that point, you know, the competitor's level is, is definitely something that we always got to just look at per case scenario, mm. right? So we got Sammy, he's got a lot of questions. All right, what you got, Sammy? Let's see what you got. Let's also, you got. also, real quick to respond to Paul. Paul sent me a DM message on my Instagram. He was asking, uh, how do you feel off the HRT therapies? Paul, I feel yeah, great. Um, running, dude. I feel great. Uh, I was lethargic Sabre, before. Up, I was real lethargic before. I'm so not lethargic anymore. Involved. My appetite's up. My sex drive is up. My energy's up. Everything's up. I feel great. So just to answer your question real quick, I do feel a lot better on the HRT. I mean, you'll feel a lot better, too. If you're having any of those problems, too, it's probably because you are low T. You want to get checked out. Yeah, Sammy. Shout so. out to Paul for coming and getting his blood work, too. Absolutely. He's a titan, though. Yeah, He's listen. Titan, though. You guys, it's simple to get your blood work. You don't even have to come in the office. All you guys got to do is call or text. 727-389-3220. Say, I seen Big Drew and John on. They're going to give me the discount. We're going to hook you guys up for blood work. 150 bucks for your full panel. Yeah. That's going to cover everything. Liver, kidneys, prostate, electrolytes, 
full thyroid panel with the TSH, T3, and T4, free and total testosterone ranges, progesterone ranges, estradiol ranges, growth hormone ranges. We've talked about those IGF-1 ranges and B12. And that's just in our full comprehensive male panel. We can, panel, excuse me, we can put on a lot more, but at that point, that's a good starting phase, and that's where you guys are going to see it at. Um, Sammy, I seen on there, you said, I know you're in Canada. We need to open up a Titan in Canada, so I need to look into that, and I'll happily open more with you out there. You should look into the amino acid therapies. They got out there, probably generic ones, but hey, something's better than nothing. Hey, you got free healthcare out there. You can take yeah. advantage of it, Sammy. <laughs> Sammy, are they getting that for free out there? Yeah. Let me know. I want to know. Free you get that stuff for free? Hey, they get it for free. Hey, Jeff, how you doing, Jeff? So we got Jeff Bahar on here. If you guys don't know him, he's very knowledgeable. He wrote the Ultimate Health Bible with me, your guide to anti-aging, fat loss, and disease prevention. We just did some commercials for this to go on TV, Jeff. Yeah, I'm actually going to start start reading that part tomorrow night, too. So Big I'm Drew's going to give a review on oh, the yeah, book. I'm going to give a review on it. You know me, I'm, when it comes to food and everything, I've always been a hardcore trainer, but I'm, the older I get, the more I'm into the yeah. food, the supplements, and everything like that. So I can't, wait, right? I can't wait to get into that. Point. Yeah, man. It's, it's all about healthy, anti-aging, living longer, feeling your best while you're doing it, so too. It would so. be a good cardio read for me. Man. Yeah, yeah, man. Sammy, I'm serious. You look into it, and I'll do it for sure. All right, Tina, thank you. We appreciate it. So we've got, we've got some more information for you guys. So let's get into some lifestyle stuff. We talked about the hormone stuff and stuff like that. We can go back to that. But let's talk about something that I think a lot of guys deal with. Um, I know me and Drew do, right? Because we wear these awesome Nike tank tops, and, and they're awesome. Yeah. But if you don't shave, they start. You start seeing like the, the, the prickles yeah, that so come the, through, the, right? They're so thin, dry for you get the you get the prickles coming through. So right. you gotta. So you know, at that shaving point, is shaving is a pain. So yeah. you gotta we gotta find the right uh what do you right do? razor. Uh, what do I? I use a uh, Norelco body groomer. Okay. It's a uh, it's a wireless. Uh, it's got the foil with the teeth to bring the hair down and the yep. foil to bring it lower. Yep. I use that, it's got an arm on it if I need to reach my back or shoulders. It's, um, a big it's one. about, you know, it's not that expensive, maybe 50, 60 bucks, but the problem with it is the foil, the yeah. foil breaks if you, if you use it a lot. Yeah. And if you don't catch it, like what John was saying earlier, mm -hmm. you don't catch when the foil breaks, you won't notice until you get out of the shower and you'll have lines with Woo. the cuts. So. Big cuts. Yeah, I never use a razor. I used a razor a couple weeks ago, I was out of town, still got a little bit of bumps from the razor. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend using a razor if you guys have yeah. any type of sensitive skin. Yeah. And the Rocco groomer is the way to go. We just got to find one that the foil doesn't break. Yeah. Up. I don't know. It's, you know, it's, it's a pain though. It's it, shaving is a pain. It is a pain. I mean, women. You guys may not realize that men we go through this stuff. But if someone calls me at the drop of a dime and says, "Hey, let's go to the pool," if I'm not shaving, I'm not going. <laughs> it takes too long. Like it, it literally does. takes too long. So it I mean, does. you got to prep for it. If I'm not shaving, I'm not going. And the worst case it. scenario is if someone's like, yeah, tomorrow we're going to go to the beaches. Now, okay, I shave everything, get ready to go. Next thing you know, it rains. Yep. So now I'm like, damn, now I got irritated skin for no reason. <laughs> yeah, it's a pain. It's a pain. <laughs> it is a pain. pain. It is a pain. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, what do you do? Like, you know, it's like, because I, I know a lot of guys have this problem. I had the same problem, um, you know, at that point I'm hairy. And when you take testosterone replacement therapy, it's probably going to make you more hairier. Everywhere mm -hmm. except for on the top of your head. And you're going to get hair where you haven't got hair before, Okay. So you're gonna have to shave it, especially if you want a smooth look. If not, you're gonna look like the wolf man, like me, and you're gonna have hair everywhere. So we use the body groomer. I have the Norelco too, I use that one. The foil does break, and you'll know the foil on the inside. And if you don't catch it, like he said, it's gonna look like somebody scratched yeah. you up, and your girl's gonna be Dang. asking you, who did you just talk yeah. to, or whatever it was, you know? <laughs> yeah. So watch out for that um, one. So don't make that mistake, or you can use that excuse. Yeah. All right, not for me though, all right? So the second one is, I, I use a Remington one, and that's another one, and that's a great body shaver I use, um, and it's got metal sides, not like the Norelco, and that will actually cut you too. So you gotta be careful, even with these body groomers, and make sure you're not making yourself up. But the Norelco is definitely the best one, it has the arm. A lot of people, are, us guys, especially mm -hmm. later on in life, you're gonna get back hair, you wanna shave it and make it look smooth. Especially the plus, if, floor. plus, if you guys are a bodybuilder, if you're, if you're working out, you want to show off your body. Oh, you don't want to sure. have a carpet, a thin for layer sure. of hair all over. You want to see it. So for sure. We, we, you got to show it off. We show what you that. work for. Yeah. This, isn't, this isn't 10 years ago, 20 years ago, where guys don't shave this and that. I mean, this right. guy, I shave my legs, I shave my arms, I shave everywhere on my body, and you know, I, I edge up my beard. The only, only place I have hair on my body is my eyebrows and my beard and my eyelashes. Yeah. I shave everything else. That's the way I like it. Yeah. I feel clean. I, you know, it's just, you can show everything. You know, yeah. it just feel a lot better that way. I don't like to have a... A, a layer of 
fur everywhere mm-hmm. underneath my shirt, and I'm in the Florida humidity, it's just hot, and I just I just feel terrible. sweaty. You I don't know, like yeah, it. I don't something like, it. like that. You know, I'm more old school. So I'm a Greek. I'm the alpha male, right? And like you know, I think my people. Would, my dad would probably make fun of me if I shaved my legs and my arms. Yeah. So at that point, <laughs> I do shave like you know in certain areas. You know, shut it because it does show more cuts off. So yeah, yeah. you want to show that hard work. And I, I guarantee like, you shave that. your you shave your arms and your legs one time, oh, and you, yeah. you're, you're never gonna go back to that. You can yeah. see veins and stuff like that, <laughs> cuts I've never seen before. So yeah. it is definitely a good thing to do. Um, but what do you do? So you shave and you have this body shaver. You're gonna get either ingrown hairs possibly, or you get razor bumps. Yeah. You know, this happens to everybody out there, girls and guys the same. So girls know all the tricks in the book, but us guys, we don't. We really don't ask. So we got to share information with each other, right? It's like a brotherhood. These girls are always like, sisterhood, we got all this, and yeah. empowerment, and women. All right, so this is <laughs> Masculine Friday. Yeah. All right, and this is John and Drew edition. So what, what I use is this 10 skin. All right? and I'll show you guys on Instagram what this is. You can get this on Amazon. It's called 10 skin. And I also asked Jay, Jay the Barber was just here, and he said skin tight. That was another one. He said it just depends what kind of skin you have. Now, I have oily Greek skin. Yeah, uh, that real oily skin out, myself. You know, so at that point, I have to use this. Now, you can use this everywhere you do. Now, what I do is, and I was telling Drew, is I shave with the Norelco shaver, right, the body hair shaver. And I also get, and I get really close. So it's, it's pretty close, pretty smooth. One time a week, maybe twice if I have another event or something like that. Awesome. But, uh... Get in the shower, wash off because your pores are gonna open up if you, especially you have warm water going on you. After you get off, just pat yourself dry a little bit. Do not try to get the towel over you. And then you can just apply this and then apply it with your hands because your hands are gonna be clean. Just get out of the shower. Mm-hmm. 10 skin, this will definitely help you, I promise. So if you have bumps, razor bumps, you're getting a lot of ingrown hairs, like me or Drew. This should definitely help. I told Drew about it. I want you to definitely try this and see what it is. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try it. Another thing, too, is when you guys are applying this or applying whatever you use, I've been using witch hazel. Witch hazel is a good one, too. Don't put it onto a cotton ball. That's the worst thing you no. use a cotton ball or a napkin because what happens is you're shaving. Yes. Your pores are open. You're opening up that pore. Your pores open. Now, now you're taking that lint, yeah. and even though it has a solution on you, when you rub it, it's going to push the lint into the pores, That's causing right. more problem. That's why you'll see a lot of bump. Um, you're clogging it and growing they'll, they'll always have a spray on them because you don't want to have that on there. So yep. if you get this, you could even put that into a spray bottle yep. and just spray it on. Or you use your hands, like you said, because yep. your hands it's don't have that lint to push back into the pore. Yeah. Like it's more like, irritation. Literally, like it's got like a little like press bottle and like literally apply it. It's thin like water too. No it's thin like water and it just rubs right in and it dries right out. So it's real smooth looking. Mm. It's not like sticky or anything like that. So does it have any type of scent? Uh, no, it it it's, clean. it's like an alcohol type scent, so it's, yeah, really, it's like a clean, it's like a neutral clean smell, too, a neutral so. scent. So it's really good. I, you know, if you guys are having that problem, this should be like you know a four or five dollar solution for you guys, mm. and you guys will look better too. So when you're feeling better in your therapies, like me and Drew, we yeah. want to look good with the hard work we're putting in or you're putting in. Mm. Make sure your skin is looking I'll good. I use that on my head too. Yeah. I shave so my head. I put it on my definitely head. Definitely try this. You know, so at that point, want to have you guys, you know, give you guys some some tips of what we're doing behind the scenes that maybe uh. You guys have some questions about uh, HRT. So let's go back to HRT one more time. So HRT, so testosterone replacement therapy. A lot of people talk about testosterone replacement therapy and doing testosterone replacement therapy, and a lot of people are on it. So testosterone replacement, there's missing components to it. And what do I mean by missing components? So when everybody thinks testosterone replacement therapy or hormone replacement therapy, they think, I'm just going to take testosterone, right? Now, if you take testosterone, we know that a couple things are going to happen. One, the aromatization. We know it's going to aromatize into DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone, and we know it's going to resort to estrogen, aromatize right into estrogen. So these two different things. So dihydrotestosterone, right, you want to be high because it's going to affect free testosterone. That means the bioavailability of what you're going to use in your body. We don't want it to go too high because if, if you're you know, genetically disposed to balding in your family, whether you're male or female, this can speed up the process of you losing your hair. Um, possibly so you want to watch out for that now estrogen here's the big thing estrogen starts rising so what's gonna happen when estrogen start rising body fat bloat uh, water retention yeah. uh, blood pressure yeah. uh, women you'll feel it in your hips your breasts your yeah. booty yeah. the estrogen goes down your booty gets smaller yeah. so a lot of times women are if they're in contest prep or they're just losing a lot of weight they say, I, I want to lose weight, but I don't want to lose my butt. That's probably an estrogen or fat-related issue, yep. meaning that you have 
water and fat on top of your glute, your butt muscle. Mm -hmm. So once you lose that water and fat, the glute or the butt looks smaller. What you need to do is get the glute bigger, get the muscle bigger. So that way when your estrogen drops, you still have that roundness and the booty still shows. Absolutely. So a lot of times women that have high, high estrogen have bigger breasts, bigger hips, bigger, bigger butt. Absolutely. But they also have a bigger stomach mm -hmm. because that estrogen is high, that's that body fat. So you gotta work that glute, make it grow, so when you lose the weight and your estrogen comes down, the butt stays. Yep. So and for the breast too. Like like Drew said, I mean we're we're looking at these different things. So we know that when the estrogen goes high, water retention is going to happen, irritability, right? So being oh, sensitive, yeah. like commercials, <laughs> crying movies, or these shows around TV that might, you know, just hit you in the gut and be a little sensitive that maybe girls might cry too because their estrogen levels might be a little higher than yours are supposed to be. But if you're in that category, you should definitely check your estrogen levels. Now, if you're on testosterone replacement therapy, you should definitely be checking your estradiol. Estradiol levels. Right. Not total estrogens, not estrone. Estradiol, E2. So this is gonna directly affect that. Now if you're getting high estrogen, I guarantee you're probably getting some water retention, irritability, mm -hmm. right? Possible fat deposits like Drew was talking about. Another thing can happen, you can get nipple sensitivity. Gynecomastia could possibly happen over a long point in time. We know when you get water retention, blood pressure is going to rise. Blood pressure is a silent killer. It will kill your kidneys, okay? I know this because my dad is going through it right now. So I gotta control his blood pressure, his sugar levels, and everything else. So his kidneys, and so he doesn't go on dialysis. Yeah. So it's 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 something serious. It might not affect you right now, so you're not even worried about it. It's like, well, it's not killing me right now. Over time, mm -hmm. this will kill you, or it will make you go and do dialysis. And you don't want to get, a th I think it was a 13 gauge needle in your arm. Yeah, it's um, like a pencil. It, dude, <laughs> it's serious. It's yeah. not, you know, it's not something to, to laugh about. And uh, your kidneys, people are always like, well, I've got two kidneys. Mm -hmm. So if one goes down, i got the other one. Guys, usually when one kidney goes down, the other one in your body is going to go down too. Or it's yeah, because it has to work twice as hard now. So it, it's, it's, like, it's messed up. Yeah. And, you know, and you can get, honestly, you can get one a kidney from somebody else, and, and that one kidney can, I mean, it can sustain you for the rest of your life. Right. It's, it's just messed up. So, guys, be careful. You only got one body. Even if you have two of the same Just organs. Just because you have two of them. If someone said you're going to go blind in your right eye, you're going to say, oh, I got another eye. No. Nah, your know. ear. If you got no. no. You guys, I, come on. I've seen, I've seen, uh, yeah. I've seen diabetes. You, there's a reason why you have two of a lot of things in your body because you need two of them. I've literally seen uh, a guy I grew up with, he had diabetes so bad. I mean, he smoked, he drank, he would not work out or he would not change his lifestyle. Mm. Right? This dude lost his eye and had to get a glass eye. From diabetes? From diabetes. Wow. I've seen people lose toes. Yeah, I've seen enough. Right? Feet and stuff feet, like that, yeah. extremities. And then, after he lost the eye and got the glass eyeball, he died two years later from the same thing. So at that point, the diabetes just it just took over, and he, he basically, the body just broke down. Yeah. And he just couldn't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's it's sad. So just make sure you guys are taking you know the precautions, and you guys are... Uh, guys are aware of what's going on in your body so that's why i said right. the blood testing is key you know hrt estrogen aromatized excuse me aromatized inhibitors for estrogen levels mm -hmm. so we want to look into aromatized inhibitors that's a missing component make sure estrogen's in check hcg so that's another one so when you take testosterone we know that your your testosterone in your body is going to shut down your natural mm -hmm. production is going to get shut off there's a signal that goes from your brain to your testicles that gets shut off that's if you take exogenous testosterone, whether it be injection, whether it be the androgel, like a cream, mm -hmm. or it be an oral troche. When that signal gets shut off, your testicles are gonna shrink. Mm -hmm. Your semen production goes down, your natural production gets shut mm -hmm. off and suppressed completely. Right. When you take HCG, it stimulates and it makes a false signal from the brain to the testicles, mm -hmm. igniting them, keeping your natural production on, mm -hmm. and keeping the fullness in your testicles so you don't got right. shrink little baby prunes that's what they call it yeah yeah and you got better semen production right. so when you're having sex the orgasms are better with your partner mm -hmm. you're feeling better mentally as well testosterone was talking about on titan talk tuesday how people just think about libido mus muscle gain and stuff like that with testosterone right, right. well the receptors in the brain for testosterone i mean far outweigh that yeah. that's why the yeah. concentration fogginess and and uh feeling of well-being yeah i think right. a lot of times people they, they get mi they get mixed up between Libido and ED. Yes. Now, there's a difference, you oh, know. For either, sure. If it's if it's an ED issue, when I'm I'm talking about erectile dysfunction. Yes. That's gonna affect 
the penis the area where you can't get the blood to that area. Exactly. So certain times guys will take Viagra or Cialis or Levitra. Yep. What happens is now they can get an erection, but right. their mind, they still have no sex drive. They're not there. So basically they're doing it to please their partner, wife, or whoever. Right. But they're not there. Their mind isn't there. Right. Or on the flip side of it, your libido could be through the roof. Right. You could be horny, ready to go all the time. Yeah. But now you can't do nothing. Yeah. Because you have erectile dysfunction. So I mean, he's true. It's true. Yeah. What he's saying is, yeah. your brain, everything has to work oh, together. Man. Together. Otherwise, you're having sex just to have it because you can. Yeah. Or you want to and you can't. So it's like you're screwed. I think I'd rather have, be able to have it, and not want to. I guess. Yeah. No. Because then your mind. Man, I want this so badly. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be what the hell? Like, yeah. Beating this thing up. Yeah, like, what the hell's going on what here? The hell you know, and then at that point, what happens is, is then the mental thing starts creeping in. Yeah. So physically, it's like, all right, well, you might be all right physically. Now mental is taken over. And now you can't get up. I always talk to guys about this because a lot of guys come to us and they, they have the libido or, or ED mm -hmm. issue. Uh, and they're having it with their partner. And then they come to us and, and they might be deficient. And they get on treatment. Mm -hmm. They get on treatment. Blood test comes back 60 days because they're still complaining about the ED libido issues. Mm -hmm. Numbers look fine. Estrogen looks fine. Everything looks good in their body, right? They're still like, hey, man, you know. Next question, how is your relationship at home? How is it with your loved one? Are you in a stress level? Are you guys near divorce? Mm -hmm. Are you guys having problems? Did she find you cheating? What, what's going on? Yeah. Oh, things aren't too good. Oh, so things aren't too good at home. So this could be a mental issue. Here's the test. And I wrote this out last night into a group. Because the guy said he still had ED issues, posted his blood work, everything looked good. The test is this. Find something that arouses you, like porn or whatever it may be. Right? Something that does not involve your loved one. Yeah. Watch the porn. If you can get an erection, hold the erection or orgasm, there's no issue with you physically. Mm. It's a self it's, it's, it's easy a, check. It's it's a check. It's, it's true too, because a lot of it's a lot check. of times too, like we're talking about what he's saying, like especially guys too. If guys, if you're with a girl, it's your first time with this girl, and she's like the baddest girl you've ever been with, this and that, and yeah. you're like, damn, and you can't do anything? Oh, First impressions, you don't want to baby. Strike out. You, you don't want to strike out. So the thing is, is just like what he's saying is, like if you if, if, if you can go home or if there's if there's other women where you can get an erection, but for some reason with this one you can't. Right. If, if there's single people out there, right? Whatever, then obviously it's it's that. You're, yeah. Maybe you're having anxiety. Maybe you're you're too worried about it because I don't see too many people having erectile problems with right. their wife. Right. Or with their girlfriend that they live together because they're just comfortable. I don't have to worry this yeah. and that. But if it's a first timer and you guys are getting, you know, yeah, stage you fright, want, you don't want to strike out. You yeah, you don't want to get stage you fright. If you're getting stage fright, you want to make sure. So or real quick, or you don't want to be having an erectile problem because of testosterone deficiency or estrogen or whatever it is. And then now your wife or girlfriend thinks you're cheating on her mm -hmm. because you can't get an erection because mm -hmm. she's like, oh, what happened? We used to do it all the time. Now all of a sudden he doesn't want anymore. She may think you're getting to somewhere else, but for sure, just, just take care of it. You don't have to worry. That's a hundred percent positive. You know that that's that's a hundred percent right. And uh, you know it's it, I've been there to a certain degree. So I've been married with Sharice for eleven years. So when you go to a doctor because you're on HRT and let's say you're predisposed to balding. And you don't want to lose your hair, so you're looking for every option in the world to keep your hair. You go to them, the FDA approved medication for that is finasteride, okay? It's Propecia, that's, that's the manufacturing name. So when you take finasteride, finasteride is a DHT lower. It lowers DHT, so dihydrotestosterone we just talked about. Mm. So when you lower dihydrotestosterone, it's supposed to help keep your hair and possibly, you know, some of those follicles will possibly grow back. Mm. That's when you use Rogaine together with finasteride. But when you lower the DHT levels, usually you get the libido effect of no libido. Right. And like you said, like she walks by, like, dude, we used to have sex every day, and like you don't want to have sex now. And then you yeah. think about it, you're like, oh, you know what? She's right. Yeah. So you guys don't want to do that. I mean, yeah. you know, if you're not married or you are married and your wife is not uh, understanding, She's either yeah. going to go find another partner to get satisfied or be really That's mad at That's thing, too. A lot of guys that are on HRT or do certain things, they don't tell their significant others. Oh, yeah. And it causes a whole other problems because yeah. if she knew that it was a medical or estrogen or testosterone right. issue, then she wouldn't have it. So, you know, you got, right. you got to speak to it, whoever you're with and let them know. Right. You know, if, if they don't, think about if, you, if your wife, all of a sudden you guys are having sex every day, then all of a sudden yeah. she just didn't want it anymore. Yeah. And when you were about to initiate, she thought of a reason, this and that, yeah. you'd probably think the worst. Like, you'd yeah. probably think the worst. So, you know, just 
you know, I mean, flip side to this is, hey, listen, everything's all right, though, right? And then mm-hmm. you just don't feel the same. You get reignited with testosterone, and you're back in the bedroom. And maybe your wife and you weren't having sex because maybe you guys are both deficient. Mm-hmm. Now you're up on super level, right? And oh, now yeah. she can't keep up with you. Yeah. Now she's like, well, what are you doing? I want to get on that. And then you guys both get to that level, and it reignites Once the relationship. You, if you guys are low T or testosterone deficient, Ooh, you, you males blood, and females. You get your blood work done, you come in and get your blood, and everything's good. Yeah. Once your, your, your doctor, if the doctor prescribes you testosterone, once you start it, Game I got changes. two words for you. Ron Jeremy. Because you will be destroying your wife or your girlfriend and you will feel great. You'll be eating good. You'll be having great sex. You'll be sleeping good. Your whole life is going to change. You guys are 40, 50, 60. Oh, you'll feel like you're 18, 19 again. Your mind's going to feel like that. For sure. Like when you're in high school, college, where every girl you saw, you were like, damn, damn. damn. Talk about the receptors. That's what it's going to be like. When, that's what it's going to be like. That's what I'm saying, man. You know, it turns back the clock in the mind and the body. So for you guys, it's a game changer. Males and females both need it. It affects us in the exact same way in the brain, libido, uh, lean muscle-wise. So at that point... Hormone replacement therapy can be for anybody. So that you really want to check out, make sure where you're at, make sure you're optimal. When you go to a regular doctor and you get a testosterone test, um, and I was going this with a couple people, but so reference range for a guy, I'll do a guy and a girl. Reference range for a guy is 246 to 916. You come back at 247. Well, you're with a normal range to a normal doctor. You're with a normal range. Everything's all right. But doc, I still got symptoms. Well, everything's all right. Here's a part of agent. Send you on the way. You get some ED medication. Maybe you're depressed. You get some antidepressants. You're good. Woman, same thing. Mm. Zero to forty. You come back at a two. You're within normal range. You're at the bottom of the barrel. Mm. You're still normal. And last thing too, guys, if you guys are having these problems that we're talking about, and you think just popping a vag or a Cialis is going to fix it. It may only, it's only going to fix term. one problem. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to fix your libido. It's not going to fix your mind. So, no. I mean, it, it, it's in the long run, it's actually going to hurt you because all you, you're going to be, you're going to have to take it every single time. Yeah. You, it's going to go farther and farther and farther down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and you're not going to get a, any other physical benefit out of it. And then mm. some people, they get, um, they get uh, nasal congestion with yeah, you'll get hot, Cialis. You'll get a, you'll get, your nose will get real stuffy, your face will feel flush, you'll get heartburn, oh, you'll be racing like crazy. That's off the Viagra. Yeah. And then the Cialis, which lasts a day or two, yeah. you can have bad heartburn for a whole day or two where you just have crazy heartburn where it's hard to this absolutely, and that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you're not getting the other health benefits out of it, so that's all it's doing. I mean, you could, it, I mean it may work, but I mean, it's... it's. What up, Pat? Yeah, man, so... Is I mean, Meech? Oh, no, I, Meech, got, I got... Uh, I, notes. Oh, yeah, we got everybody on here. Oh, Paul was asking, uh, Paul, you were asking about the HRT, how long it takes to kick in if you scroll down a little yep, bit. Yep, right here. Uh, how long does it take for a test to kick in? All right, so sipping A is usually between seven and 14 days. So we say about a week to two weeks, you should start feeling effects and the levels should start coming up. Mm-hmm. Propionate's a lot faster. So within the body, within 24 hours, out of the body, usually within 72 and going down. And anthate's 14 to 21, uh, just depending on what ester you got from us. Usually sipping A and anthate are the most common ones. Yeah. Um, sipping aid is probably what you got. So sipping aid is about seven to four. So it's about two weeks. We say within the first month, everything should start feeling a lot better. You should start feeling a difference in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Energy wise, concentration wise, sleep wise, appetite, appetite. appetite you quick. know, if you're doing activity, obviously you should start seeing some better results a lot quicker, more expedited. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know Paul, we were talking about him. Paul, Paul drives. I think I think you drive a semi is what it was. And Paul was like, you know, he goes to like these, you know, these places like, you know, like truck stops or whatever. And he wants to get out because he does weights in the truck. That's Paul? I, think that's just, I don't know, maybe. But yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So he does weights in the truck. And at that point, he wants to do cardio. Yeah, but he, <laughs> yeah, yeah but he, he goes outside or whatever. And he doesn't want people to watch him or look at him. You know, you know yeah, like, yeah. what are you doing over there? You know, because they're probably not doing it. So we're like, oh, that's weird. He's trying to be active. Ha, ha, ha. So at that point, listen, I told you, run around uh, the, the area. Or where you're at, that, that's a good one. If you're gonna do some cardio, if you can't run or hit pavement hard, you can go to a, like a, a like a more like I guess more secure area where there's not too many people around. Jumping jacks, mountain climbers. Uh, there's there's a lot of different things. Um, so at that point, uh, Pat Russo said, "What's up, Drew?" So uh, at that point, yeah, you can do some of that activity, but definitely get out there and do some of that cardio. Tell us how you feel, Paul. Let us know. The biggest thing is with patients, you guys got to be honest with us. So when we call you every 28 days to follow up with you and see how you're feeling, or you might just not be feeling good, you can call or text us. Let us know what's going on so we can help you guys and get you guys dialed in so you guys do feel good because that's why you guys are coming to us ultimately, all right? So I, I, I think uh, I think we've covered some, some pretty good subjects today. I think, uh, you know, yeah. what, do we, what do we go for? Is it 45 minutes? Yeah, 43 minutes. 43 what up, minutes. Craig? 
Oh man. So all right. So yeah, forty three minutes, guys. I think we we spent a lot of time talking to you guys a lot about it. A lot of good information. Iron Babe. Iron Babe Classic Iron this Bay. Saturday. Saturday. It's going to be a good one. Huge. Titan is the official sponsor. Title again. sponsor, Title baby. Sponsor, baby. It's going to be good. I know Woo. some competitors have been kicking ass in the gym. I've been seeing competitors every night, seeing the post. It's going to be good. Yeah. Jose has been sending me yeah. stuff. It's going to be It's going to be a good yeah. show. Good Jose show. Santiago, big shout out to you and Sun Tran. Thank you for having us as a title sponsor. Yes. We appreciate everybody that's involved with the Iron Bay Classic. A lot of hard work. A lot of cool awards are being given away. Yeah. I know, like, and he does a military division he's doing this year, which is really cool and awesome. Um, so it's just, it's going to be a lot of giving back. I know he got some... Uh, some limited edition Titan Iron Bay Classic shirts made. Oh yeah, we're going to be giving away nice. a lot of gear. Me and yeah. Big Jewel will be out there. We're gonna have some of the Titanettes out there represent. It should be a great time. Yeah, right. We're gonna Except have a lot you guys want shirts? People keep asking me, how do I get the shirts? How do I get the shirts? Come by tomorrow. All you need is put your name and email on the iPad. We'll give you a shirt. It's yeah. that, that means that easy. It's right? that it's simple, easy, guys. Simple. It's definitely we'll that We'll give easy. you a little bag and everything too to go with it, so you'll be good to go. Yes. Yeah. We're the only company I've, that I've seen locally that does this. That has real, you know, good quality clothes that give them out. We're not charging twenty, thirty dollars for a throwaway T-shirt. Right. We're giving them out. We're showing love. You know, you guys show us love back. So Absolutely, you man. can see the Titan shirts everywhere. The, the, the V-necks everywhere. The, we got the custom stuff now. Dry fit stuff. It's got the tight <laughs> team Titan on the back. We got everything. We got the new women's. Uh, yeah. The uh, sweatpants. Yeah, the, uh, the joggers. The joggers with the matching uh, crop tops. Yeah, leggings. I mean, dude, we, a lot we of good stuff. Got it locked up for you yeah. guys. So we want to make sure you guys are looking good, feeling good, and performing at your very best. That's what we're about. Yeah. Um, before we end the show, me and Big Drew want you guys, please do us this favor. If you guys are on YouTube, please press subscribe. Oh, if yeah. you guys are on Instagram, please tag through your friends, yeah. at Joe, at Tina, at whatever it is. Facebook, just share this. It's one click at the bottom. Just share it yeah, one time or share it to a friend that might benefit from some of these tips or information that we're giving out to you guys. We're trying to help you guys out as much on the educational side and give you some fun tips as well. So anything you guys want to hear about, just let me and Big Drew know. Cool. DM us. Also, too, on YouTube, guys, when you click the notification, click the, click the subscribe. Oh, yeah. uh, click the notification, too, so you can hear that bell. If you guys want to know when we're coming on, yes. just set it up for your phone. Boom, it'll send you reminders so you guys can tune in. You can also forward that to other people to tune in to. Also, guys, forward this. When you're it's on huge. Facebook, take this and share it to somebody else. Send it to the messenger, oh, yeah. repost, let's get this thing going. I have a lot of people asking when we're showing this. Yep. If you're at work or you're at school or whatever, you can't watch right now, you can always tune in later. It's going to be reshared. So right. find this on Facebook, share it, just keep sharing it to other people and scroll, scroll. So that way people that can't tune in live, they can see it for later on too. Also, if you can't watch us, you can always listen to us on our podcast. We'll have our podcast up on every major place oh, you can yeah. do, from Apple to Google to Spotify or wherever it's at, everywhere you can get a podcast, pretty I much. iHeartRadio is another great one. So. The Titan app's coming soon. Woo! This is going to be crazy. It's getting crazy, guys. We're getting uh, a lot bigger, a lot faster. So join us along for this ride. I appreciate you guys. I'm John from Titan. Big Drew from Titan. Titan Lifestyle Friday. I'm excited. Tomorrow, I'm Baylitz. We will get see it. you guys tomorrow. Y'all better tighten up.